This video series was made possible by Eric Schaefer Guitars, Luther's Mercantile International, and Stumac. Welcome back to the shop, friends. So it was February of 2020 when I got the itch to build an acoustic guitar. Really since then, I've been trying to develop the skills and also gather the tools that I would need to do that. So today I'm really excited to share with you the first video in a build series on building an acoustic guitar. My suspicion is that most of you have never built an acoustic guitar. So today we're gonna to go through the parts of a guitar and also look at the build materials we'll be using in this project. So for today's discussion, I'm gonna use my son's guitar. This is a Little Martin. It's a three quarter um, acoustic guitar. Uh, we'll use it for comparison to the materials we'll be using for the full-size guitar. I should also point out that this is not a bolt-together kit-type guitar build. We're going to be doing almost everything from scratch short of milling the lumber up from a tree. So before I show you the build materials we're using for this project, let me just real quickly go through the main components of the guitar. The acoustic guitar is made from a sound box in a neck with a fretboard and then it obviously has the strings. The box has a top and a back and then it has two sides that are bent to form the shape of the guitar. Imagine that it's going to be rare you would find a tree that is wide enough to make the whole soundboard and back out of. So for that reason we'll be taking two pieces of wood gluing them together to form the size of the guitar. Now, if you've ever been in the market for an acoustic guitar, you know that they're not very cheap. Now, this is probably a three or $400 guitar, and the soundboard, the back, and the sides is actually made out of laminated plywood. Don't worry, we're not building this guitar out of plywood. Check this out. This is a bookmatch pair of Sitka Spruce. This is a beautiful bookmatch pair of Sitka Spruce. It's all quarter sawn, meaning the grain is coming straight out at you. Um, it's large enough to make a dreadnought guitar out of. We're gonna be building a OEM model guitar. It's an orchestra model. It's a little bit smaller than a, than a dreadnought. There's obviously two pieces of wood here and we will have to joint the middle and then glue those pieces together to form, to form the soundboard of the guitar, the top of the guitar. Now, if you're not familiar with the term quarter sawn, let me show you real quick using this diagram. This outer uh, portion represents the bark of a tree. This represents the center of the tree. Then you can see those annular growth rings. A piece of quarter sawn wood means that the grain is going from top to bottom of the board. So if we took a piece of wood right there, that would be quarter sawn. As you can see, those annular growth rings are facing top to bottom on that board. Now for this project, we're obviously using very thin pieces of wood. So if this was the board that was cut out of the tree, those pieces would be cut into very, very thin pieces. And this has already been done before, you know, I received the material for the build. So those pieces are all cut into very thin pieces. So the term book match means that we have two pieces of wood that were uh, attached to one another. So if you took the top and you opened it up, then the pieces of wood are gonna be um, book matched. So if we have the top two pieces of wood, for example, and you turn the, and you open the top one out like this, then those pieces are gonna be uh, mirror images of one another. So here's another way to depict that. So if we've got a board and we cut that board in half and then we split them into two, well, you're gonna have a book match, meaning that these, that, meaning that these two pieces are uh, mirror images of one another. So if we're looking at it from the standpoint of where the, um, the, the center of the tree is, the center of the tree would be right in this area, and then those annular rings will be like this. They'll be more tight towards the center of the tree and then a little bit wider as they get to the, uh, the ends of the board. So now let me show you the pieces we're using for the back of the guitar. This is Indian Rosewood. And again, we have a book match pair, meaning the board was split open. The pieces are book matched, meaning that they are a mirror image of one another. And again, they'll have to be planed and glued together to form the, 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 the proper width for the back of the guitar. The sides of the guitar will also be Indian rosewood. And as you can see, that's also book matched. It won't be as noticeable because they're gonna be on opposite sides of each other, but it is pretty nice that they are a book matched pair of really beautiful Indian rosewood. These are the pieces that will have to be bent into the proper shape of the sound box. Now the soundboard, the back, and the sides of the guitar are made from very, very thin pieces of wood, as I just showed you. Now we're gonna to need to make some bracing to support the structure of that. This is Adirondack spruce. 
It's a beautiful clear grain. I actually have three pieces. There's three beautiful pieces of clear grain quarter saw material. You can also see here, hopefully, hopefully you can see the direction of the annular rings of the tree. We will obviously have to mill these into the proper sizes and shape them to the proper size to uh, brace the, the sound box of the guitar. So the next wood we need to discuss is what we'll be using for the neck of the guitar. So for the neck, we're gonna be using this really beautiful piece of mahogany. It's a very straight piece of wood. It's got really no knots in it. It's very, um, very clear of any knot. And then for the fretboard of the guitar, we'll again be using Indian rosewood. And this will be glued to the neck of the guitar, and that's where the frets are, the place where you put your fingers that creates the proper sounds when you're playing the guitar. A lot of builders use ebony, but my understanding is ebony is exceedingly hard, and it's also fairly easy to chip it. And my understanding is that Indian rosewood's a little bit easier to work with, so I thought, since I've never built a guitar before, I would prefer to use a material that's a little bit easier to work with. The final material I wanna show you today is what's called kerfing. Kerfing is a portion of the guitar, it's a type of brace really, that strengthens the sides of the guitar because those pieces are made from really thin pieces of wood, but it also increases the surface for gluing so you can glue the soundboard in the back to the sides of the guitar. You can imagine trying to glue an eighth of an inch soundboard to an eighth of an inch sidewall would be very difficult if there wasn't something to widen it out a little bit. Now these pieces come pre, um, basically pre-curved, so they are bendable. These could easily be made though uh, on the table saw uh, in the event that I needed extras. But these are uh, already made up. I'll just have to uh, cut them to the proper length and then glue them to the sides once we get to that point of the build. Guitar. If you look inside the sound hole of Brock's guitar, you can just barely see some of the kerfing glued to the sides of his guitar and also to the back. There's kerfing actually along the soundboard and also the back of the guitar increasing that gluing surface. So I don't want to overwhelm you with information regarding the uh, parts of a guitar and all of that. Um, if you haven't ever seen a guitar built before, this is probably all new information to you. I hope this build series really inspires you to try something new. Maybe push yourself to new limits and try something different. Even if you're not building a guitar, um, there's a lot of things that you can do to increase your knowledge of woodworking and that's what I've been doing by learning this process over the last uh, six months or so. I obtained all the materials for this build through one of our sponsors, Luther's Mercantile International. On their website they have something called a kit wizard and the way that works is, is you can scroll through the kit wizard and you pick all the pieces that you need to build in a guitar. It doesn't let you check out until you've actually picked at least the bare minimum pieces for building a guitar. It'd be easy to forget something because there is a lot of parts to it. Now, Luther's Mercantile will actually bend the sides for you. They'll cut the sound hole for you. They'll join the sides and back. They will uh, pretty much do any part of the process that you would like them to do short of actually assembling it. Now, I chose not to have them do really any of those things because I wanted to do it all myself. So I just went through and ordered the bare minimum supplies that I would need to build the guitar. I'll be sure to put a link to all of our sponsors in the description of this video. So that's it for video number one in the build series. Next time, I'm gonna go through the plans that I have for building the guitar. And I'm also gonna show you how I built the guitar mold, which is a critical part of building an acoustic guitar. The guitar mold is really what holds everything in place while you glue it together. This actually took probably a week or 10 days to get it right, and I'm gonna show you in the next video how I built that. So thanks for watching. When episode number two is posted, I'll put the link here so it's easy for you to find. I'll see you guys on the next video.